Hello and welcome back and it's time for another Should You Buy. Today we are looking at the QMiro QNAP Router Mesh System. It's a combined mesh router and NAS system here. And in today's video, just like my other Should You Buys, we are looking at five reasons why you may want to buy this device for your home or business environment. And of course, five reasons why you might want to give it a miss. So without further ado, let's crack straight on with it. Why should you buy it? Reason number one, that you may wish to buy this system. And by this system, it's worth highlighting these are actually separate entities. But one of the main reasons you should buy this is because it is a combined NAS and mesh router system. That's right, this is a system that has all the features, functionality, software and capabilities of a QNAP NAS 2 bay, but it is also a Wi-Fi 5 mesh router. It allows you to utilize it and one of its many Ethernet ports on the rear for the NAS and for the individual router there and add mesh nodes, that's what these are, that knock around for about 100 quid each, set them up around your home or business environment as a mesh system. It is a combined solution, much like their solutions that were ranging with switches and NASes combined. This is a router and a NAS combined. This is one of very few, I think I've only ever seen about five in my entire time working on this channel and with all the sort of stuff I've done in data storage for a number of years, there's been a few alternatives like this, the Amber Latticeworks device and a few ingenious ones but this is the first time I've ever seen it. And as a complete solution, it makes a lot of sense. A number of people who will have uh, a router in their house already from the internet service provider or whatever, they haven't really, they don't, they're not aware of some of the great features you can get in more modern, fully featured routers, but they'll still buy a network attached storage device to move away from the cloud. This allows you to have a little bit of both. And given that the same CPU and memory features that we'll talk about in a bit are available in this two bay NAS system, and this device arrives about four or 500 nicker and that same architecture you can get for about three, 350 quid is actually not that much more of an upheaval and a way for you to improve the network coverage and the secure kind of closed network system in your home or business that a combined NAS and router can bring. Reason number two, and something I've already sort of already touched on, is the fact that this system arrives with pretty decent specifications for, you know, what is, we're not going to say gimmicky, but we're going to say slightly off kilter and a bit weird, a bit niche, a router and NAS combined. They could have got away with using pretty budget hardware. They could have knocked around with an ARM-based processor in there, maybe an Annapurna or a Marvel, maybe a gig, half a gig of memory, but they didn't. They really went all in. They included a quad-core Intel Celeron processor, um, and that CPU is a quad-core 2.0 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz. It also arrives with 4 gig of memory inside, and again, that's DDR4 2400 megahertz memory, and with this system and that process, processor, which has embedded graphics as well, UHD 600, it means 1080p and 4K transcoding, it means surveillance, it means virtual machines, it means Ubuntu, it means a multi-tier backup solution, it means Plex Media Server, it does all of that with this. It even arrives with a 2.5 GBE network port on the rear if you want to integrate the NAS portion of this device into another network and use the router system separately, or if you want to integrate a switch into the NAS so you've got other connected users who want to enjoy greater than gigabit bandwidth but when sharing the NAS, you've got 2.5 GB there straight off the edge. So again, some great little bit of hardware there. And QNAP not scrimping is quite impressive, given that they could have so easily gone for that ARM option. Another reason that I quite like this system is the fact that they kind of doubled down on USB connectivity. Now, of course, the satellite modules, they've got USB connectivity. And what I quite like, again, is the fact that even the little satellite models have got two gigabit LANs. They've got a WAN and a LAN or two LAN, depending on how you want to use it. But this system also has USBs there on the rear. Now, you might be thinking, oh, who cares? USB, Snore, Crimea River. And yeah, it's a 5GBE USB, you know, USB 3.2 Gen 1. God, you've got to hate that naming convention. But nevertheless, sorry, I had to check my mic was still on there. Um, nevertheless, with those USB ports there, you can do more than just storage. You can utilize these for upgraded uh, Ethernet adapters. So you can add five gigabit Ethernet if you choose to this device. On top of that, you can attach, obviously, office equipment and stuff like that, you know, your printers, UPSs, and stuff like that. But what you've also got access to with this is QNAP's expansion series, the TR and the TL series, allowing you to attach expansion devices to this and not only have those two bays of storage, but add 
two more potential expansion devices of four bays and higher, all of which use USB, and there's even faster and better performing options out there, whether you want a JBOD box or if you want to take advantage of this and a hardware RAID expansion. What I'm saying is this two bay isn't the end of the road. You can utilize it and fully populate it with storage, but then later down the line, add even more storage. This isn't a NAS with compromise. This is a featured prosumer NAS and decent little mesh router system as well. The next reason to quite like this device, and again, this does go back to the idea of storage. If we remove that front panel there, we do find that inside those two bays of storage where RAID is supported, where snapshots are supported, and all of those different configuration and recovery options, the fact that these drives are 15 mil height trays. Now, it, let's face it, the fact that these are two and a half inch drives in SATA is a little underwhelming and we would have liked to have seen something bigger and that is something I might touch on later on but this is still meant to be quite a petite device and still having three and a half inch media in this would have really bulked it up and I think if they went down that road it would have to be a much bigger bigger solution maybe something that integrates a switch as well so these being two and a half inch media in this modest design and 60 watt PSU the fact they've gone to the trouble of including that 15 mil height means that you can get some pretty big two and a half inch media drives inside this. You've got five and six dB drives out there and they are getting bigger, as well as SSDs as well being deeper so they can put use more NAND chips and therefore have larger SSDs as well. So again, 15 mil height drives, very forward thinking. Which brings me on to the final thing I quite like about this device. And to be fair, this isn't exactly the most awe-inspiring thing about the router, but I do think it's worth highlighting. This device has three different frequencies covered. It's got 2.4 gigahertz frequency and two 5 gigahertz frequency. It's rated at AC2200, so again, up to a potential 200... And you know, it is rounded up in these things because you find it a lot with these mesh routers, but it's 2200 megabits. So again, 220 megabytes of potential full coverage across multiple devices. But what's really interesting is because it's got the two five gigahertz frequencies, it means once you utilize it in a mesh situation, it can dedicate all or most of one of those five gigahertz connections and still give fantastic coverage on either device. They've both got four antennas two by two inside based all around the edges of the chassis inside and that coverage allows for greater mesh connectivity with the backhaul as well as greater coverage on the connected devices in the local area environment via wi-fi but of course, as I say, this device isn't for everyone and there is lots of reasons why you may not want to go for this or stick with your ISP router or buy a traditional NAS. So first one, let's get it straight off the bat and it's the most obvious negative of all. It's Wi-Fi 5. It's Wi-Fi 802.118cn. There are no X Wi-Fi here. There's no Wi-Fi 6, which in 2021 is a bit of a sin. I've got to tell you. Right now, Wi-Fi 6, I would say, if you are releasing a router in 2021, it's expected that it's Wi-Fi 6. If you're an internet service provider or giving away your router for free, fine, that's okay. But with more and more hardware, from laptops to tablets and more and more happening in the background, I do think Wi-Fi 6 is an acceptable level that our, uh, the protocol of our devices should be. And the fact this isn't Wi-Fi 6 kind of undermines it just the tiniest bit, particularly when they did release the Qhora Wi-Fi 6 router a little while ago, it had 10 gigabit connectivity, two ports as well. I think the fact this device doesn't have that is a little bit of a disappointment. Another bit of a negative, and this is quite a small one arguably, is for people that are going to be taking advantage of the NAS side of things. And I would say that that is that this system in its surveillance software, QVR, one of the best programs from QNAP in their lineup of apps, this has QVR Elite, not QVR Pro. Now, you may be thinking, surely Elite's better than Pro in the hierarchy, right? And, you know, maybe from a dictionary, you're, you're right. But QVR Elite and QVR Pro are distinct in a number of ways. And the two most important ways, one for good, one for bad, is that QVR Elite runs using less resources from the system. It can run a great deal better, and therefore, if it uses less resources, it can run more cameras on the system, which is always good, isn't it? But QVR Pro, the other version, has eight camera licenses, whereas Elite only has two. Now, that is important because if you're buying this device because of its support of QNAP and you're going to use the software inside this and you're going to use the surveillance software, you've suddenly found out that you're down six licenses compared to if you bought most of the other 
um, EXT4 QNAP. This doesn't take advantage of um, ZFS. Look at the size of it. But the fact it only uses QVR Elite and it's two camera licenses is really disappointed. I reached out to QNAP on this and the reason is that because the system has four gig of memory that can't be upgraded and QVR Pro has a minimum requirement to run at its very best with four gig of memory and this system for uh, running all the operations uses about a gig a gig and a half it means that there wasn't enough memory in the 4 gig by default to fully support qvr pro therefore they have to switch it to qvr elite which is a far more efficient power utilization hardware resource even um version of their surveillance platform and therefore with qvr elite you've only got the two camera licenses which leads us neatly into memory. I mentioned that this device arrived with four gig of memory and let's be fair, it also arrives, both of them arrive with a separate processor and separate memory for the router side of things. They've both got a Qualcomm quad core processor with half a gig of DDR3 memory just to run the router side. The four gig of memory in this is just for the NAS side of things. However, that four gig can't be upgraded. Now, 4 gig is still pretty good by default, let's be fair, but it wouldn't be on the negative list unless I had a reason to be against it. And that reason is simply that 4 gig of memory being not upgradable limits utilization of virtual machines, limits the use of containers, limits the use of um, using Ubuntu, it limits even Plex Media Server. Once you get into the real dense stuff, if you're not going to use Transcoding and just native playback, what I'm saying is, 4 gig of memory on this, given that CPU, which can officially support 8 gig, it's a real shame you can't officially upgrade the memory on this device higher than 4 gig, because I think it imposes a glass ceiling where these exact same specifications on the 253D, 453D and 653D, all of those can be upgraded officially to 8 gig. So it's weird that this system does not have that option. Maybe it's literally a physical installation. Maybe the memory is soldered onto the board in individual Hynix modules. Who knows? But still, 4 gig of memory not being upgradable? Mm, a bit of a shame. Next negative, and you may, may be thinking right now, God, this system actually sounds pretty damn capable. I was going to buy a NAS. My God, let me get hold of one of these. Hold your high horses. There is something you need to bear in mind, and that is... So these two systems are not created equal. This is the NAS and router. And for those of you who have not been following, this is just a router. This one doesn't have an Intel processor. It doesn't have all the extra memory. There's a reason that this knocks around for four or 500 NICA and this knocks around for about 100. This is solely a router, this one. The QMIRO 201 and the QMIRO 201 plus uh, the two QMIRO plus 201 even. Now, why is that something worth raising? Because a lot of the features that are on this are not on this. And one in particular is to do with the USB ports. This system has that USB port and you can attach external storage media to it. So you can go ahead and attach an external hard drive and share the contents of that drive with connected users on this system. However, you can't use a lot of the file management and tools that come with QTS and the NAS side and access to the storage media on here is incredibly limited by comparison. It's basically low-level breadcrumb file management stuff. You don't have a lot of the integrated services. And I get it, it doesn't have that Intel processor and QTS inside. But surely there's more they could have done to facilitate people accessing that um, USB storage than giving you a very, very low-level access point to the USB drives. And I think that kind of inhibits that USB port on this in a way that it's just fully fleshed out on this module. My final problem is one that I'm sure a lot of you are going to argue with me on because this is just a case of personal preference. I don't like the colour. I'm not, I, I, I can't help it. I don't like it. Um, I maybe, again, this is an incredible personal preference and that's why these 5x5 five five are my opinion and not yours. But I don't really like this baby blue thing. I like the design. I love the ventilation. I think it looks very cool. I think it finds a very fine line between QNAP's own aesthetic in a lot of their solutions as well as something I would consider a business class router. It's good. It's solid as well. And there's active cooling on this. I think the design, the shape, oh, I love it. Even the a rather discreet use of LEDs around the system, genuinely a fan. I just don't like this blue color, this baby blue design that they've gone for. And there's a couple of NASs that have this, the TS-130 and 230. And I kind of, I wish this was in other colours. If I owned this, I'd probably spray paint it, if I'm honest. I wish it was in a neutral, like, uh, completely neutral, like white or black, which makes me incredibly boring, I'll grant you. And dare I say it, binary, but let's face it, this blue colour is not for everyone. And given the majority of NAS systems arrive in very clear 
predominant colors are very very on the you know look very clear that 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 i think it's kind of a gamble they went ahead for this blue color given how many people have got this color in their office but there you go these are five reasons why you might want to buy the q Miro mesh router and nas combination system and five reasons why you might want to give it a miss if you do want to learn more there are links in the description to reviews on these systems as well as other videos click like if you want to learn more and you enjoyed the video click subscribe to be kept abreast of all these new innovations that happen in the world of storage and take advantage of the free advice section over at nas compared it's one click it's completely free it's manned by two human beings myself and eddie the web guy we are here to help you i will see you next time